Ooh, nice After Effects animation. How'd you make that? Wait, is that even possible in After Effects? No. I made that in Blender, which is replacing After Effects for a lot of motion graphics. Let's talk about why. My name is Robin. I teach the Blender 3D Essentials course on bringyourownlaptop.com. And it's probably gonna show a bunch of my work on screen now. I'm pretty happy with my portfolio overall, but there's one project from 2014 that is a stain on my whole career. I swear, if I had a time machine, you know, I'd change a lot of things, but if I had a time machine, the first thing that I would do is go back to 2013 and stop myself from making that project. You know, I'd be sitting there, just 15 years old, clicking in After Effects, throwing CC Glow on text. You know, that's typically what I did. And then an adult version of me would pop out of nowhere, delete my Adobe account, and vanish. What am I gonna do? Download Blender, of course. It's free, after all. So, you know, I download Blender, I type some text, all that's fine. I throw on Glow. Wait. There's no Glow in Blender. There are no effects at all in Blender. I thought this video was about how Blender was good and it doesn't even have any effects. Meanwhile, in a parallel universe where I still have After Effects, I'm refining my Glow. I'm, you know, I'm doing the trick where you do a series of blurs and CC composites and then Video Copilot's vibrance on top. That's how he used to do it back when I was using After Effects. Is that still how you make glow? Okay, so that's After Effects Robin. Blender Robin has just given up. Like, what am I even doing? What even is glow? Huh. What even is glow? If I understand how Glow is made in real life, I can set up those conditions in Blender. Okay, don't miss this. This is the fundamental difference between After Effects and Blender. Turns out, there are different kinds of Glow. If you have emissive text on a wall, then it's gonna light up that wall. But it's also, if you put it in fog, going to glow in the fog. And if you slide a piece of glass in front of it, it's gonna glow through the glass. And you also have, you know, dew on the camera lens. You have film bloom. There are so many different ways for something to glow and they all look different from each other. And that's key. So here, let me show you. I just slide this piece of glass in front of the text and boom, glow immediately. And why not? while I'm at it, just throw some scratches on that glass. Easy. And then I start thinking, you know, why is there glass there in the first place? Maybe it's an old computer monitor. And notice what just happened. Blender forced me to understand why I'm adding the effects I'm adding. Because it's not as simple as just throwing the effect on there called glow you actually have to set up the conditions to make it glow. So this piece here, it uses real lens blur and real film bloom, and that's what gives it the kind of organic feel that it has. In this way, Blender replicates reality. In After Effects, you can, you know, add a drop shadow on something. In Blender, you would literally set up a light that would cast a shadow. In After Effects, you can fake some warping through like fake glass. In Blender, you just set up glass and you get real refractions behind that glass. And if that seems awesome, it gets better. You can tell I'm a huge Blender nut, and I think you would be too, if someone just helped you get into it. And that's the purpose of the Blender 3D Essentials course on bringyourownlaptop.com. The purpose is to get designers into Blender step by step, even if they've never touched 3D before. And my goal with this here video is to convince you that you're gonna wanna learn Blender. And hey, if you're still unconvinced by the end of the video, Bring Your Own Laptop has a really good After Effects course too. But now, let's talk about stylization. Because people come back to me with this, right? I, I push Blender on After Effects users all the time. And typically they'll respond to me with, clearly it's good at realism. 
Like that's obvious, right? Shadows, glows, refraction, all that. But a lot of our work is flat. It's stylized, it's not realistic. How does Blender do there? And actually, I got this gig back in my After Effects days, which was flat stylized animation. And had my Adobe account been deleted at that point, and had I been forced to use Blender, I would have been scared. But then I would have found Toon Shaders. So these are special materials that you put on your 3D models to make them look flat. And they still respond to lighting, but they look more stylized, more hand-drawn. And it can look very, very good. In fact, Blender is a bit of a standout when it comes to stylization. That is among the other 3D giants because Blender has this feature that none of the other 3D programs have where you can literally draw by hand in a 3D space. They call it grease pencil and people make insane stuff with it. Like I have to show some stuff on screen of what people make with this stuff. Like it's it's incredible. Okay, let's let's imagine a project that After Effects me does. Alarm clock on a table. I send it off to the client. The client comes back with a revision. Client says, "I want to be closer on the clock, I want to remove the light, and I want to turn the book around and see the spine instead. Is that possible? I would have to redraw a whole lot of it, but the Blender version of me says, yes, sir. Move the camera, spin the book, go grab a cup of coffee. Because revisions in 3D, I've learned this, revisions in 3D are so, so much easier. Because you have the, the world used to make the picture. So you can spin stuff around, you can see the backside, you can move the camera, you can move the lighting, all of this stuff. And you don't have to redraw anything. But that's not to say that everything is easier in Blender. It's not, it's obviously not. Like something as simple as masking, for example. Masking is a breeze in After Effects. In Blender, you have to do masking in 3D, which means cutting a hole in one object with another 3D object. And, well, it works, but it's, uh, well, it's getting better. Some things are easier to do with just pixels rather than 3D geometry. So can we just say that these are different tools for different purposes, right? After Effects is good at its thing, Blender is great at its thing, these are horses for courses, case closed, video over. I have some more issues with After Effects. You know, you'd think that for a software that does so much character animation, you would have some tools to do character animation. But you don't. And I think this is probably why we're seeing so much geometric motion design. I think people are genuinely scared of moving into characters. And no wonder in After Effects, it's scary and plugins don't do it much better. If you do any character work, you gotta download plugins and they do rigs a little bit better. But oh my God, the difference. If you've used a proper Blender character rig at any point, you will know that the difference is night and day. Blender can make character rigs that are like for professional films and using one of these rigs is just, oh my god, it's nowhere close to After Effects. And you can use them to make stylized characters too. These character rigs can make anything. It's absolutely awesome. Physics, right? Why doesn't After Effects have a physics engine so you can knock stuff around? Blender does. Blender has that kind of physics engine and one for fire, one for water, one for cloth. And I say all these things to my friends who use After Effects and occasionally they'll come back and they'll say, all this sounds perfectly fine, but can it do essential graphics? So for those of you who don't use essential graphics, it's basically preset animations that you can make for Premiere so that the editor can just Use your animation, type in their own texts, select their own colors, and the animation will adjust accordingly. So, 
can Blender do that? No. Of course you can! And it's so freaking good too. You don't do it with expressions like in After Effects. In After Effects you basically have to be like a super genius coder to make these essential graphics. No. In Blender you do it with nodes, which are these boxes. You put them beside each other, you connect them with little noodles. It's so much simpler and it's so much more powerful. Like, let me show you an example. I type something, press play, and plants start growing on it. It works with any text too, look. Checkmate, After Effects, real life effects, toon shading, and the technical features. Those are the reasons that designers are moving to Blender for motion graphics. And they should all take my Blender 3D Essentials course on bringyourownlaptop.com. Link is in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel here too, if you don't want to miss my next video here. I will see you in the Blender 3D Essentials course.